Good morning. We're walking towards the Cathedral Church of the Holy Trinity, St. Peter, St. Paul and St. Swithin, more commonly known as Winchester Cathedral. The cathedral was started in 1079 by William the Conqueror on the site of two previous Anglo-Saxon minsters. We can see the outline of one of these here. This was the Old Minster. New sections were added on by various kings and bishops over the centuries until the cathedral that we can see today was completed in 1532, almost 500 years after building work started. Winchester Cathedral is 558 feet long and that makes it the longest medieval cathedral in the world. When we see this from the inside we really get an idea of the length of the nave. Near the entrance to the cathedral we can see the grave of Jane Austen. She was buried here in July 1817. She had a family connection to the cathedral which is why she was allowed to be buried here. On the wall nearby is a plaque that was installed years after her death. In 1900 a memorial stained glass window was added above the plaque. A little farther along the nave we find the Tournay font. This was made of polished black marble in the Tournay district of Belgium in the 12th century. It's the only font in the cathedral and still in use today. There are seven Tournay fonts in England and this is considered to be the finest. On the opposite side of the nave we can see the Chantry Chapel of William Wickham, one of the most famous of Winchester's bishops. He founded Winchester College that we saw in the previous video and also New College in Oxford. There are several Chantry chapels in the cathedral including those of Bishop Eddington and Cardinal Beaufort, who at the time was the richest man in England. The choir stalls are positioned immediately under the tower and they're hidden by an elaborately carved wooden screen which was restored in the 1870s. The choir stalls themselves date from the early 1300s and are said to be the best preserved in Europe. This is the view of the choir back down the nave, towards the west window. Beyond the choir lies the presbytery and the high altar which stands in front of the great screen. These photos don't do this justice, it's a magnificent work of art. The original screen was carved in stone in the 15th century. The niches originally held paintings, but these were removed during the Reformation. The paintings were replaced by carved stone statues in the 19th century, which explains why, among the statues of the Saxon kings of England, if you look very closely, you can see a statue of Queen Victoria. The ceiling is decorated with a beautifully ornate series of ribs and bosses. Around the presbytery, in front of the high altar, we can see a large number of ancient mortuary chests including those of Alfred the Great, King Canute and his wife, Queen Emma, William Rufus and King Egbert. The remains of these individuals were originally interred in the Old Minster, but they were transferred to this Norman cathedral after the minster was demolished in 1093. Their bones were placed in chests, but these were heavily disturbed during the English Civil War, and the remains are today all mixed up with several individuals found within each chest. Behind the high altar and great screen we find the Holy Hole. The bones of St Swithin were buried near the altar and some time later a small hole was cut into the wall. Pilgrims crawled into the hole to get closer to St Swithin's bones. I'll leave that thought with you. At some point the relics of St Swithin were moved to another spot behind the high altar. The shrine itself was demolished during the upheaval of the Reformation, but the site is still venerated here. 
In the south transept, the Morley Library houses a collection of rare books, all of which were given to the cathedral by George Morley, Bishop of Winchester from 1662 to 1684. The books still rest on their original 17th century carved shelves. Also in the south transept, the Kings and Scribes exhibition displays hundreds of ancient artefacts, including skulls, weaponry and building stone, all displayed alongside 21st century technology. We can also visit the crypt. These vaults were built at the early stages of the cathedral's development, so they're over 900 years old. Mind your head. It came as a surprise to me to see a modern sculpture here. This is a life-size statue of a figure in contemplation. It was made of sheets of lead by Sir Anthony Gormley, and was installed here in 1986. The crypt often floods. There's a tube mechanism through the body of the sculpture towards the arms. The cupped hands mean the figure can often be found holding water captured during the flooding. As we walk back through the nave of the cathedral, the great west window is in front of us. Most of the stained glass was smashed by the roundheads during the Civil War in 1642. The window was put back together by the townspeople as a mosaic, following the restoration of the monarchy. So we've come to the end of our tour around Winchester Cathedral. I hope I've given you a flavour of the history of the cathedral and also highlighted some of the points of interest. If you live in the area, or are planning a trip here, Winchester Cathedral is well worth a visit. Thanks for watching and if you found the video interesting, please subscribe to our channel.